this little case would typically hold a media center or productivity oriented mini ITX build. But not today. Introducing my GTX 1650 small form factor gaming machine. Hey everyone, this is Project SPC. Today I'm showing off my latest Latte Panda gaming build. I'll go over the design history, component overview, show you benchmark and thermal results, and of course some gaming. Back when I made this, some of you suggested I make an aluminum case build for the Latte Panda Alpha graphics card combo. I started learning aluminum enclosure designing, drafted a crude prototype drawing, and sent it off to protocase.com for a single unit quote, $180. I wasn't going to perfect the design in a couple iterations, and as a small YouTube channel, I couldn't drop a ton of money into this. So I thought, why reinvent the wheel? Many ITX cases are just the size I'm looking for. All I need to do is design an interface. And here's the result. The base case is a Goodizer A01 Mini ITX case. You can find this on Amazon for about $50. Under the hood is a Zotec GTX 1650 and a Latte Panda Alpha 864S with 8GB of RAM, an Intel M3 8100Y 2-core 4-thread processor with turbo up to 3.6GHz, an M.2 M key to GPU and a 4X PCIe riser bridge the Panda to the GPU. For a power supply I have a Pico PSU and a 120 watt power brick. For storage, I'm actually using a 120 gigabyte SSD. The surprise, it's not on an M.2 slot. And you can see it down here, it's kind of hard to see with all the shadows. Um, it's actually a USB to NVMe adapter and I have the USB cable plugged in right up here. And on it is a Windows to go installation. I'll go into this more in detail in an upcoming video, but in summary, I've been using this for the past couple weeks now and I haven't had a problem. And finally, on the bottom is a 3D printed interface that bridges my build with the Mini ITX mounting hole pattern. The best part, besides cramming all of that into this tiny little case, the USB ports and the front LED and power button all work. I've got it all wired up right here. First up is Heaven Benchmark, 1080p, high settings, average of 73 frames per second with a score of 1,852. Next up is Passmark. On the left is the results, but I'll also leave a link to them in the description below. It's not stellar performance, but for the size it packs quite a punch. Next is Crystal Discmark. On the left I have the NVMe to USB adapter results. It's not going to beat an NVMe drive in an M.2 slot, but when your GPU is taking up the M key, it's one of the best solutions. Here is EMMC performance for comparison. Here is a cold boot startup time to show you how the USB to NVMe adapter performs. It's not going to beat my Samsung 970 EVO in the M key slot at 10 seconds but it's comparable to the EMMC performance. For the thermal stress test, I used MSI Combustor. Both GPU and CPU hovered around 85% usage with spikes up to 100%. In total, this was run for about 15 minutes. The CPU maxed at 81C and averaged around 75 toward the end, while the GPU stayed cool in the mid-60s. It's important to note I swapped the thermal paste on the Alpha. Doom 1080p Vulcan resolution 100%. We are getting consistent 80 plus FPS.
This is the GTA 5 benchmark at 1080p. Average frame rates are around 50 frames per second with dips below 50 when there are significant objects or physics to calculate. Otherwise, it is very playable, especially if you lock in at 30 frames per second. Overall, I really enjoyed making this build. I ran into several problems, the biggest being power, disk storage, and Wi-Fi signal. But with a name brand Pico PSU and a USB 3.0 to NVMe boot drive, it came together quite well. The only thing left that I didn't cover is Wi-Fi. The aluminum enclosure acts somewhat like a Faraday cage and makes Wi-Fi quite touchy with the standard Latte Panda antenna. A set of IPEX Wi-Fi antennas like this should fix that, especially since there are mounting holes on the back for them. Now, I'm not advocating that this build is the most cost-effective, but if building these kind of setups turns you on, then this is for you. I will be making another video on this build in the near future. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button, maybe even subscribe, and stay tuned for my next video. For those of you wondering, it's the LiPo Latte Panda Battery Build. And thanks for watching.